that was just some stock footage of a tube train. Yes, it's another at-home video, which is all we can do because we're not allowed out to travel at the moment. That's fine though, because we can discuss the tube map. And last week we discussed if you stripped out like the overground and the DLR and the trams, how much of the tube map is actually made up of the tube. And another question that came out of that, which is something I've always wanted to do anyway, is well, how much of the underground is actually underground, which is what we're going to explore and discuss today. That is to say, how much of the tube is actually below the surface in a tunnel? Now, if you look at official TFL documentation or just articles about this, people say it's around 50%. It's around half. But I think we can do better than that and get a precise number and a precise percentage. Straight away, you should go with the fact that we're just doing the underground, just the 270 tube stations. So this doesn't include overground or the DLR or the trams. Now, you might think that it's dead easy. You just go, well, you just count what's below ground and what's above ground. How hard can that be? But there are grey areas. There are some very grey areas. Certainly deep level tubes that are deep underground, like the Northern and the Piccadilly and the Central Line, all in the Zone 1 area, they are definitely underground stations. But when they get out into Zone sort of 4, 5, 6, the Central Line and the Northern Line pop up out into the open. So they're clearly above ground. So is it fair to say that any station that is at ground level or above, and there are some that are above, think Mill Hill East, that's quite high up. Uh, those stations are clearly out in the open and not underground. OK, so we've got that there. The next tricky thing comes because you've then got what are known as the cut and cover station. So the original tube lines, we're talking what we now know as the Metropolitan and the District and the Circle and the Hammersmith and City, the subsurface lines as they're, as they're known because they're just below the surface usually built at around 20 feet underground where they just dug up the road, uh, laid the tracks, put the road back on top. They're just below the surface, although even in some cases, uh, I'm thinking Hammersmith and City down to Hammersmith branch, that's all in the open. But the ones that are in zone one, are they underground? Well, yes, some of them are, but some of them aren't. Uh, if you take uh, St. James's Park, uh, for example, it's a cut and cover station, subsurface, built 20 foot down, but there's no roof and you can clearly look up from the platforms and see daylight. If it rains or snows, the weather comes into the station. So I think that's quite a good indication of whether a station is in the open or not. If the weather from outside can get onto the tracks and onto the platform. Now there is another way of determining it. I'm going to have to read this off my piece of paper here to get it right. There is something called a Section 12 map, which is uh, Section 12 of the 2009 Fire Precautions Regulations to do with fire regulations. TfL have to state which of their London underground stations are underground and which aren't, so that the fire service know what they're dealing with if there's an incident at that station. To that end, there is a brilliant tube map, which I can almost guarantee, and it's on screen now, that you have never seen before. And this shows, according to TfL, uh, and that Section 12 fire regulation, list what tube stations are actually classified as being underground. From that, they also generated a list. I took that list, put it into a spreadsheet. And then from that, though, uh, TfL have produced, and it's on there, I'll put a link on screen, TfL do produce on their page of maps, and they do loads of different maps. They have a map of showing you where the tunnels are. Uh, theirs is really good. It actually shows you for the whole tube map, not just tube stations as I'm doing, but for the overground and DLR as well. So that's quite a good way of doing it. And so I took that map and I did a count and I'll do the figures at the end because then what I also did is that I made my own map. So my own map is what I think counts as stations as being underground. And again, there are some gray areas. Did you know, for example, if you're standing at Southgate tube station on the Piccadilly line, it's actually, it comes out uh, around Arnus Grove and it's in the open, but then it goes back underground for Southgate because Southgate's on a hill. But if you peer, you can sort of lean and look down the tracks, look down the tunnel, you can see the outside world. It's the same down, I'm gonna check. It's the same down at Hounslow West near Heathrow on the Piccadilly line. Uh, it's an underground station, except that the outside world is clearly visible to the point where if you stand at the northern or eastern end of Hounslow West tube station and it's a windy day, the rain will just blow in and get the platforms wet. So could you say that, for example, that the little bit of Hounslow West tube station is in the open and the rest of it isn't? 
There's another classic case just like that, Great Portland Street, a subsurface station. It's underground, except for the bit at the western end of Great Portland Street where the daylight streams in from like a hole above, which is like a remnant from where steam used to escape. And Bow Road, Bow Road is an incredible uh, example because half of it, the western end of Bow Road, is clearly built over and underground, but the eastern end of Bow Road is in the open. Look up daylight weather in your face. There's two other strange caveats that I want to mention, uh, and that's Fulham Broadway on the district line it used to be in the open, and then they built a brand new shopping centre and a brand new entrance. Now, again, you can see daylight at either end, and the weather will just come in. So on my map, rather than shade it as dark grey, I've shaded it as a light grey, and I'm going to argue that technically that's not underground, it's in the open. Uh, another great one is Wembley Central. Again, it's been built over, but if you stand at, I think, the southern end of the platforms of the Bakerloo line at Wembley Central, the daylight is there and the weather is there and you can get a phone signal. So arguably, is that in the open? I think it is. I'm consulting my list here again because there's some that I need to double check on. Notting Hill Gate is a brilliant example of, well, how do you say if it's underground or not? Because the central line platforms at Notting Hill Gate are clearly underground, deep level tube, but the subsurface platforms on Notting Hill Gate are completely in the open and the weather comes in. Same at Bayswater, uh, part of it is in the open. Baker Street, well that's fascinating, the Jubilee lines and Bakerloo lines of Baker Street are definitely, definitely deep underground. And then the Circle line uh, and the Hammersmith and City line bit of Baker Street, that's underground, but the Metropolitan line platforms at Baker Street are easily in the open, look up, daylight, phone signal and weather that comes in. So what I'm going to say is, and this is quite lenient and you may not disagree, but that's fine, is that within the confines of the gate line, if any part of that station is in the open, I'm going to say that yes, because you can be in a part of that station in the open, that station isn't completely underground, and I'm going to err on the side of it being in the open and therefore not underground and therefore overground. There's a few more like that. Uh, Liverpool Street, subsurface platforms, western end are in the open, even though the central line is obviously deep underground. Uh, now, actually, I think that's it. Oh, no, there's one that we disagree on between the TFL map. They say that Allgate is definitely in tunnels. I disagree, TFL. You can clearly stand on the platforms at Allgate and look up and see there's the brick wall, daylight and rain and snow and weather will come in. So Allgate, I'm saying, is in the open. Therefore, <laughs> this is what I come up with as the official figures. I shall put them on screen now. If you go by TFL's tunnel map, uh, out of 270 stations, 154, that's exactly 57%, uh, are overground, while 116, according to TFL, that's exactly 43%, are underground. If, however, you go by Jeff's map, which I've drawn up, uh, I'm going to say that there's a difference of 12. I think that 12 more stations are overground i.e. 12 less are underground than what TFL say. And so uh, 166 stations are in the open, that's 61.1%, or 104, only 104 stations are underground, uh, that's 38.8%. You can download my map, there's a link in the description, along with a whole other stuff that you can download on my website, which I call the actual underground map. Uh, it might not be perfect. If you think there's any mistakes, send me a tweet and let me know. But to answer how many stations are actually underground, it's between 38 and 43%, depending on how you define it.